Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be testing out this set of 36 acrylic paint markers and they're from Graby. Now, I've had things from Graby before and reviewed them and they were always really high quality. So because of that, I had really high expectations for these. So in today's video, you will see me trying them out on wood and on ceramics to see what kind of results I would get. On a recent visit to my local pound shop, I found these cute little wooden boards and I just had to get some. I think I bought seven of them and yeah, they weren't a pound either. <laughs> they were £1.50. That's the thing with these pound shops. They're not pound shops anymore, are they? They've got things of all different prices. But anyway, I think at £1.50 each, they were great. And I bet they've all gone now, but I might get some more if they still have them. I'd never used acrylic markers before and because of that I wanted to just keep it all very simple so as you can see I'm just doing a very simple pattern of just stripes onto the wood just to see how the pens behaved for me. I didn't want to try doing anything too complex and as you can see the pens are working really well. What I did find was that I had to keep drying it out very quickly with my um, embossing heat gun. Just a quick blast of warm air was just enough to dry it out enough to carry on. I found that if I didn't do that, the colours did bleed into each other, which you would expect to happen really. Another thing that I discovered was you do need to keep shaking the pens up every now and again. They've got a ball inside them so you can hear them, the ball rattling as you shake it. And the reason I found that I needed to do that was because after a while the paint and the, the pigment and the water tend to separate a little bit and it starts to come out a little bit more watery. You can't tell by looking at it, but what happens is it starts to kind of seep into the grain of the wood and you can see it bleeding along the grains of the wood. And so that's, I found that if I shook it up again and it all thickened up again, it didn't bleed into the grain of the wood anymore. So I thought I'd tell you that. I thought it might be quite handy for you to know if you get some of these they are really good but you do need to keep on shaking them up every few minutes i haven't actually tried out all of the colors yet because 36 colors is quite a lot i did this board and the same thing in blues and greens but I still didn't use all the colors but so far i have to say my favorite is the gold i don't know if you've noticed but it really shines brightly it's gorgeous anyway on to the next thing. That was quick, wasn't it? I need to, I need to speak faster when I'm narrating because I get pa I get behind on what's going on in the video. Anyway, <laughs> now you can see what I'm doing. I've put a little mini ceramic jug onto my cup turner and I thought I'd have a go at working on ceramics. And it wasn't as easy as it looks. It was all a little bit tricky. Um, but it was fun doing this. I've always wanted to have a go and I never got around to it and it worked really well. It was, it takes some getting used to, to do this, but the, for the, a first attempt, it was quite good. <laughs> and the acrylic marker did adhere to the ceramics quite nicely, although it will need sealing, which I will get to in a few minutes. This, the one you're seeing me doing now actually isn't the one you'll see at the end because when I'd finished, I managed to scratch it and I scratched a load of the paint off. <sighs> so I had to start again. <laughs> so the one you see at the end will actually be slightly different because I know some of you are quite eagle eyed and you would spot the difference. So I thought I'd point out that I did do a different one. <laughs> The great thing about it is that any mistakes or messy bits can be wiped off with a wet paintbrush or a cotton bud and it cleans up really easily. After that, I decided to do another one to go with the board that you saw me do at the beginning and this one turned out better. Everything turns out better with practice, doesn't it? And I used the gold in this one and 
Yeah, like I said before, I love the gold. It's so shiny and beautiful. And once I'd done this, I actually did a sugar bowl as well. But I didn't film myself doing that. But the sugar bowl came out beautifully and you'll see that at the end. Once I'd finished painting my ceramics, they needed sealing. I used this Makota spray varnish, which is kind of, I think it's for car parts looking at the picture on it. It's for all different things to do with cars, but it's really good and it's really shiny and really hard wearing. I got this from Resin Pro and I'll put a link in the description with a discount code as well. I would really recommend this spray. It, yeah, it worked really well. I'd probably do two coats if I were you, but just to make sure, you know, but yeah, it's really good. The other option is to use resin. You can either dip them in resin and let it drip off or you can put them back on the cup turner and coat them on the cup turner for a lovely even finish. Now on to sealing the boards. I'm going to be using epoxy resin and before I can do that, I need to mask off the rest of the board. I'm using liquid latex and that works really well when you're masking on something like this because it stops the um, epoxy resin from bleeding onto the wood, which can sometimes happen, especially with very raw wood like this. It just soaks up the epoxy resin. So I like to completely seal it before putting any resin on. What you will see me doing here is using the liquid latex, but I'm using it all over the face of the board. And you might be wondering why I'm doing that and why I don't just do a thin line next to where the resin's going. And I have got a really good reason for that, actually. When I've done this in the past, I've found that if you do just a strip of the um, liquid latex where you need it when you take it off it can sometimes um, kind of not discolor the wood but the wood can go a little bit paler and you can see where the liquid latex has been um, like it kind of leaves a tide mark type thing do you know what I mean <laughs> so that's why I'm covering the whole thing so that then if it you know, if it lightens the wood at all, like it has done for me in the past, you won't know because the whole thing has got it on. So yeah, that's why I'm covering the whole thing. And this stuff works so well for this purpose. I really do love it. And on the back, I've put Vaseline or you might know it as petroleum jelly so that any drips of resin that go down up the sides and onto the back won't stick to the back. And you'll see soon when I clean it all up on the back, how easily the resin comes off if you coat the back with Vaseline or petroleum jelly. So here I'm using transparent resin from Resin Pro. It's one of my favourite all-purpose epoxy resins. It works perfectly for this job. And yeah, as you can see, I just poured it on and it's as simple as that really. Oh, and I didn't, because there was a fancy edge there, I did need to carefully um, manoeuvre the resin to the edges very carefully and try not to go over the edges. Once the resin was cured, it was time to clean it up and just watch to see how easily these drips come off. And th as you can see, you can see where I've put the Vaseline on the back and they just wipe off really. I probably didn't even need that knife. I could have just used my finger or something it just comes off so easily there was a bit that I needed to use my knife for you know where the hole is yeah and I noticed that that one um <laughs> had kind of closed up so I needed to use my knife to get that off but other than that the Vaseline worked really well And once you've got rid of all the drips of resin, you just need to get some isopropyl alcohol on a cloth and wipe down the back of the board and it removes all traces of Vaseline that are still on there. As I was wiping it down, I realised that I had a splodge of resin on there, which I don't know how it got there, probably with my finger. <laughs> I had a splodge of resin that just had to be sanded away. So I'm just using a nail file to quickly sand that off and then it was ready for the next step. 
And the next step is actually the most fun step of all. <laughs> it's very satisfying. It is taking off the latex. And all I'm doing is using a pencil eraser just to rub it to get it started. There you see it's got started. And then all I need to do is pull it off. And I think I managed to get it off all in one go. It was a bit of a challenge to myself. You know, like when you're peeling an orange <laughs> and you try and get it off all in one piece. For some, you know, I don't know why it's important, but it becomes quite important to only do it in one piece. Well, it's the same kind of thing here. I was seeing if I could do it without tearing it. And I think I did. I'm just watching it as I'm speaking. <laughs> That yeah, I think I got it all in one piece, and it yeah, like so it comes off really easy, and then that's it, it's ready. I actually stained it next because I found it all a little bit pale and uninteresting, so I decided to stain it, and so that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm using a medium oak wood dye, and all I'm going to do is apply it to a cloth and then rub it on all over and allow it to dry. And it's as simple as that. And what I found it did was it made it look so much richer and it nourishes the wood as well. So yeah, it's just better all round with just a little bit of colour in that wood. Here I've just swapped to my blue one because the wood dye had already dried out on that one. And I'm applying some wood oil and wax just to nourish the wood and also to protect it. And it just finishes it off beautifully. So I'm just rubbing it in in a circular motion. And then once it's dried after an hour, it can be buffed. And if necessary, you can repeat it. It's, when it's the first time, it's best really to repeat it. And it just makes the wood last a lot longer and keep beautiful forever. Well, maybe not forever, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> So here we have them all completed and coated and protected and I'm really happy with the results. The acrylic painter pens worked perfectly and I'm really looking forward to trying them out on some different surfaces because apparently you can use them on just about anything so yeah I'm going to see how true that is. I will put links to everything that I've used today in the description along with discount codes. So if there's anything you would like to try out, you'll know where to find them. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And I will see you again soon. Bye for now.